This video idea was brought to you by Mark Stevenson. Please subscribe to his channel. Link is in the description. Hello everyone. I am the Golden Scouta, bringing you another Dragon Ball What If scenario, part two to the Vegeta one. I'll link that video right now up on top if you haven't seen it. But without further ado, let me reintroduce my guest to the channel. It's been quite a while. Probably about a month or so. How are you doing, Mark? Yeah, I'm brilliant. Great to be back. Been looking forward to getting down to this one again. Can't believe I've, the time's flew since then. So let's let everyone hear what they've been waiting for. Yeah, a lot of people have been requesting a part two to this. So we decided to re kind of rebrand this as what if Vegeta was the main character in Dragon Ball? So we kind of talked about this a little bit, and we kind of decided that the conclusion of the last Vegeta video, the only way it makes sense for things to really move forward is if Goku was able to obtain Super Saiyan like how it was originally in the series, and maybe Vegeta being stronger than Goku in his base at that point. Let's just say Vegeta is at 4 million in his base, and Goku is at 3 million after Vegeta's potential is fully unlocked. That's a pretty good amount stronger, I would say. So, everything plays out the same, basically, until the fight with number 19 and 20. So Vegeta arrives to that fight, and he turns Super Saiyan, but there's a different tone shift this time. Piccolo in the original series was like, he might have surpassed even Goku at this point. But now, since Vegeta is probably a lot stronger than Goku, just based off of that handicap from the Frieza arc, because we're saying that he was 4 million at that time. So Vegeta naturally would be a lot stronger than Goku, because they were pretty much even at this point in the canon series. So Piccolo would exclaim like, wow, Vegeta is way stronger than Goku. And I would say everything plays out the same until Vegeta fights number 17 and 18. Because one thing is, Vegeta could not even fight with number 18. 18 pretty much slaughtered him. But I think in this scenario, Vegeta would be able to actually fight one-on-one -on -one with 18, and possibly 17 too, at the same time. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, definitely the um, fights with the first two androids would be a walkover. Jiro still escapes using his brains. Um, 18 is the first time we saw Vegeta lose in the canon with his Super Saiyan form, and he is a hell of a lot stronger here after the potential unlocked and the mastering of the Super Saiyan form. So I think once he got the upper hand, we would see 17 step in, and if he's continuing to get a victory, perhaps we'll see the other android step in and see him enter the series a lot earlier. Yeah, I agree. At this point, I don't see any way that Vegeta could take on number 16. I just don't see it happening. I just think that he's way too overpowered at that point. So after this, Vegeta would go in the time chamber as usual. Things would play out pretty much the same again until Vegeta fights Cell again. So Vegeta would allow Cell to obviously absorb number 18 since he's not given a challenge. But this time, I think Vegeta might be able to fight head on with initial Cell at least until he powered up and just showed Vegeta how strong he is. Yeah, I'd go along with that. There wouldn't be the crushing originally, and it might be a similar thing to what we saw with Trunks, where Cell is kind of toying with him, letting Vegeta think that he's got the upper hand, getting Vegeta into his gloaty mode. You know, I am the Super Saiyan, I'm the strongest there is, before wiping the floor with him. And then we'd get to see the whole Trunks failed Super Saiyan grid free stuff going on. Um, Trunks would probably be stronger too, after training with Vegeta in the time, time chamber, because, well, he just would be after training with a stronger Saiyan. It's kind of the way I see it going down before we get to round two of the training scenarios. Yeah, and one thing is that Trunks doesn't have that unlocked potential like Vegeta did, so he'd pretty much be at the same power level as before. So I think that the whole power of the Ultra Super Saiyan wouldn't be so emphasized just because there isn't this huge gap between him and Cell even though that form's pretty much useless because it's so slow. Now, this is where things really get interesting. Maybe at this point, since Vegeta is so powerful, Goku might take notice on him and be like, hey, like even though like in the original series, like he wanted just to take that last seven days or 10 days to rest, 
This time he might actually go in the time chamber with Vegeta and train him to master Super Saiyan. Because one thing is, is that Goku didn't really think that Vegeta would be able to amount to Cell. And Goku just thought he was that far above Vegeta after mastering Super Saiyan. So, in this scenario, I see Vegeta and Goku actually training together in the time chamber. And maybe after... Uh, Vegeta sees Goku has mastered Super Saiyan, because I see no reason why Goku wouldn't master Super Saiyan in this one, too. Maybe Vegeta would actually accept that help from Kakarot. Who knows? Yeah, it would be amazing to see. Um, Goku would definitely spot the power that Vegeta has, and the gap wouldn't be so big between Goku and Vegeta when Goku en leaves the time chamber. And Goku's the kind of guy who wants to improve. He knows that he's not quite caught up with Cell, and he probably doesn't want to risk Gohan fully, even though he knows the potential's there. So using Vegeta to get himself stronger and Vegeta stronger kind of fixes all his problems, gives him a chance to close the gap, it means it might not be all down to Gohan, and makes Vegeta stronger as well. Giving him the kind of competition which Goku strives for, he'd love the chance to train with a Vegeta who's this strong. Oh yeah, especially since he's seen his potential, because one thing is, is that uh, whenever Goku comes out of the time chamber, Vegeta's just like, oh, you think that you got so much stronger, and you think you're stronger than me, and then Goku's just like, yep, basically. So, I mean, I think that Goku would have a little bit more respect for Vegeta in this scenario, especially since earlier he had that much of a gap ahead of him. I mean, since we're saying that Vegeta in this scenario, in the Android Saga, or Artificial Human Saga, that he is probably around Piccolo level whenever he fused with Kami initially. So, I just think that after this, Vegeta would be able to be actually a really good second asset to, in, in relation to Gohan. Because one thing is, it's crazy that Goku just relied on Gohan as his trump card and the one who was going to beat Cell. That was a very crazy gamble. So at least Goku training Vegeta to master Super Saiyan fully, at least there's two people who could potentially beat Cell at this point. Yeah, I definitely agree. He doesn't have to take the risk, doesn't have to risk his son, who, personality-wise, everybody knew that it wasn't his kind of scene, and he only got there because he was pushed so far. So maybe Goku could realise that, just like Piccolo did, and take the common sense approach and have somebody else powered up. I mean, it's what most people would have done in that situation anyway, so <laughs> I don't mind Goku <laughs> thinking that up. Yeah, and one thing is, I think that Cell might release the Cell Juniors for a different purpose this time, especially if he's fighting Vegeta first, and he's actually having a hard time with him. I think that he would release the Cell Juniors so that way nobody else can help Vegeta, and Cell would probably just try and win any way he can, because... One thing about Cell, he didn't think that anyone would get powerful enough to beat him, even with like 10 days of training. Like, Cell, for all Cell could have known, they could have gone in the time chamber for all 10 days and got just that much more powerful. Yeah, he would be out with desperation. I mean, he was that confident that he offered them the chance to train. And if it took them 10 days, God, Cell would have been... <laughs> Cell would have been walked over completely, but obviously Goku and Gohan took a lot of time off. But in this scenario, He's getting desperate against Vegeta. Vegeta would not let him take a Sensu Bean like Goku did, so he wouldn't be getting his power back. Release the Cell Juniors. I think Cell would be in for more of a surprise when he saw Goku at the level he was at and Gohan, because the Cell Juniors would be a challenge for them. They wouldn't be like a walk over like Super Saiyan 2 Gohan walked over them. But full power Super Saiyan Goku, full power Super Saiyan Gohan are going to be strong in comparison to the Cell Juniors. Yeah, I don't see any scenario where the Cell Juniors can actually survive against Goku and Gohan, but let's just say that one of the Cell Juniors like manages to kill, say, number 16, and he has that epic speech with Gohan and how 16 sensed Gohan's power or something like that. I would say at this point, Vegeta would recognize that Gohan is that much more powerful than him. And I think that things would, might go similar to how they did in the original canon series. But I think the thing that would be different this time... Let's say Vegeta now has enough S-cells to turn Super Saiyan 2 against Cell after he kills Trunks. I think that that would be such a good moment for Vegeta to be like, Step back, Gohan. 
this is now personal for me, he's killed my son, and then proceeds to actually be the one to defeat Cell. Yeah, I absolutely love that idea. So we would have Cell out of desperation blow himself up still and Goku instant transmit away and still pass away. Gohan get injured, similar way, Trunks die and at this point we see Vegeta lose it completely, as he did in the cannon, but because he's more powerful. There's the Super Saiyan 2 hit, so we now have Super Saiyan 2 Gohan injured and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta taking on Cell and Vegeta finally living up all to all that pride, letting out all that emotion and being the man to take down a main threat. Be fantastic to see and I know there's a lot of Vegeta fans out there who are probably dreamt about this <laughs> many a time. Yep, it would be a final flash in Kamehameha beam battle, but this time Gohan would be able to easily distract Cell, so it'd be even easier win than last time. Yeah, completely. And then it'd be the crush over Goku's defeat. It's interesting whether or not he'd come back to life now, Goku, because there's more defenders of Earth. He might not be as worried about the threat to Earth, having Vegeta that strong as well as Gohan and himself. So there could be even a way back for Goku, wish-wise. I still think that Goku would want to stay dead just because the whole thing is just like, you know, all these people have been coming to kill me, and all these threats have been coming because of me, so I'm just going to stay dead. So I think that that uh, Goku would make the exact same decision to stay dead. He would gain Super Saiyan 3 in the afterlife, and I think that everything would pretty much go the same in the Majin Buu arc, but one key thing is that Vegeta is no longer measuring himself up to Goku because he's surpassed Goku. So there'd be no reason for Majin Vegeta to be a thing. Unless if, unless if by some crazy scenario, Vegeta sees Goku turn Super Saiyan 3, and then he's like, well, I want to have that power for myself, and then maybe Bobbity unlocks his power, and then that makes him turn Super Saiyan 3. So in that case, that would be insane. Two Super Saiyan 3s battling it out. Yeah, I, I, I like going down that route. Um, I don't know how quite he'd see Super Saiyan 3 Goku, unless during the tra the battles against um, Babidi's minions, you know, as they go level to level, Goku just shows it off to tell Vegeta that I'm still stronger than you, after a bit of dialogue. And that's how he sees it. Then he becomes Margin, then we get this Super Saiyan 3 battle, which would awaken Boo very, very early. <laughs> Gohan would, yeah, that could be the case. Yeah, will there be that much energy getting put out? He'd only wake up earlier, which wouldn't be good for Gohan. Yeah, and then one thing is that unless if Boo somehow spits out Kid Boo or, or his evil half or something like that, he's screwed because there's no way he can handle a Super Saiyan 3. Yeah, no way at all. It'd have to, Vegeta would be the one to take him down. Instead of the atonement moment, it'd be... Vegeta getting victory as Super Saiyan 3. Another thing I like about this is we don't have to have those goddamn fusions. No Gotenks, which I'm quite happy about. <laughs> Obviously, Goku's time would run out, so that's why Goku's not involved in the final fight. Yeah, well, none of those like really amounted to anything, because it was like, let's throw fusion at this guy, let's throw ultimate Gohan at this guy, let's throw a spirit bomb at this guy. Oh shoot, the spirit bomb's not working because Goku's not at full power, so... I mean, I don't know. The Majin Buu arc was pretty hectic, so Vegeta just ending it like that would save a lot of trouble for them, especially the whole Earth dying. Yeah, it wouldn't happen. There'd be a lot less casualties. I mean, the only people that would have died, really, is the people Vegeta took down before his fight with Goku, if he still had that moment, because Buu wouldn't have the chance to rampage. His first meeting with Vegeta would be curtains. Oh yeah, and because there's no Boo and there's no uh, breaking the Z-Sword to get the Elder Kaioshin out, Goku would most likely go back to the afterlife and Vegeta would be carrying the series. So uh, the only thing I could think of about how this could move forward, about how Super could move forward, is either it doesn't just because Goku's not there and they don't have enough Saiyans for the ritual, or just by chance they pull him out of the afterlife so he can complete the ritual. And in that case, I think that Vegeta would probably be the candidate for the Super Saiyan God, instead of Goku in this case. I would love that as well because Vegeta has a bit of history with Bruce, especially if we'd had that whole him hurting his wife first, as well as the flashback to his childhood. So if Vegeta was the one to 
fight Barus in the Super Saiyan God form. It had a bit more to the story than Goku's just met him and been creamed by him and <laughs> finally caught up. It yeah. made more sense. <laughs> yeah, and I, I pretty much see ROF just passing and going without any real consequence, but what makes things kind of interesting again is that once the Universe 6 tournament happens, Goku's not there. So, and he was the one who was able to beat Hit and pretty much kind of inspired him to forfeit against Monaka. So in this case, I think that Universe 11, or in this case, I think that Universe 7's Earth would be transferred over to Universe 6. And then whenever uh. the Universe Survival Arc happens, Vegeta's gonna be fighting for Universe 6 along with other people. That's really interesting. We'd have some team there for that because we're saying Vegeta would still lose to Hit, so we'd have all that happen. And then the type, the team, if it's, if they're in Universe 6, would obviously involve Hit, Khalifa, Kaba, Vegeta, Gohan. Um, who else would you see in that team, if that's how it's gone? Um, I would just say take out some of the bottom tier guys from Universe 6, and then you pretty much have a solid team there. It's like the Dr. Rhoda guy, um, can't think of any of the others from the top of my head. Uh, comment section, if you could think of the ideal Universe 6 team with Vegeta and all the cast in there without Goku, list the team down in the comment section. I'm really curious about your guys' opinions on this. But, who knows? I, I don't know how this tournament would end up going, especially since it seems like that Ultra Instinct Goku was like a big factor to what made Jiren curious about Universe 7 in the first place. So unless if Vegeta can tap into that somehow, I don't know how the Tournament of Power would go. Uh, I don't know. Universe 6 might get erased at that point. Yeah, this is impossible to talk about because Vegeta's training. He, he did, trained with Whis on his own, so maybe he could have pushed closer to that, closer to the Ultra Instinct form rather than whatever the hell his form is called that he's reached now. Not sure what the name for that new form is. But um, we can't, it's, it's impossible to say. Let's just say Jiren kills him and the, the story's over. I can't, <laughs> I can't think of another way to think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as much as we like Vegeta, um, unless if he can pull something crazy against Jiren, I don't know if even the combined effort of him and Kefla can actually take him down, so... I don't know. And another thing, guys, the reason why we did not mention the Goku Black arc is obviously without Goku doing all the things that he did, that arc wouldn't have happened in the first place. So there you go. But I would say that we covered pretty much everything that would happen if Vegeta became the main character in this story. Do you have anything else to add or any just anything? I don't think so. I didn't even realize we were going to go at the end of Super, to be honest with you, but it worked. Um... Uh, we'll come back next year when the hiatus is over. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Super's not coming back, but if something else comes, we'll we'll carry it on. <laughs> yeah, and those wondering about GT, all that would happen is that it would be called Dragon Ball VT. Dragon Ball Vegeta time. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, guys, this is the end of the video. Make sure you go and subscribe to Mark Stevenson. I am leaving the link to his channel in the description below. And be sure to suggest what kind of what-ifs you want to see in the future. And with that, guys, I hope you all have a great day, and thank you so much for watching.